Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to look at is forces between two blocks. I have two setups here. Uh, the order of the blocks is reversed, but in both cases I'm applying a push force on the left. In the top one I'm applying that push force directly to the smaller block M1, and in the bottom case I'm looking at the push force uh, directly on block M2. I have several questions associated with these two configurations. Uh, number one, what is the acceleration of the blocks? Uh, number two, what is the contact force between the blocks? And the last one, what's, which block has the greatest net force? All right, there are three ways to support Physics Ninja now. Uh, number one, give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Number two, consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. And number three, if you can, if you're in a position to do so, consider giving some super thanks. A dollar or two goes a long way into helping me. All right, let's get started. All right, so the way you solve this, uh, let's do both cases over here, is um, first thing you can do is set up a free body diagram. So if I set up a free body diagram, I have my applied force, call that my push force here, acting on each of these blocks. Now notice here that I only have it acting on M1 for the left side, and I only have it acting on M2 for the right-hand side problem. So the next thing we have to do now is put in all the other forces acting on it. So you could put the weight, for example, of each block. Here I'm not considering any friction, so we don't have to worry about that. We just want things to slide. So again, adding the weight, uh, that's an easy one. And M1G for this guy. Now the last thing you could do here is put normal forces. So I could call this a normal force acting on block M1. That's the surface pushing up on the block M1. This is the surface pushing up on the block M2. It's different because the weight is different. So here I can go back on this side. I have N2, and I'm going to call this one here N1. Now, uh, let's think about the interaction now between both of those blocks. So I now have to add a force because I have two surfaces that are in contact, and they're in contact right here. So what can I do? What kind of force should I say? Well, there has to be a contact force acting on M2 from M1. So I'm going to call this contact force C1, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to draw it right here. So C1 is the force of M1 acting on M2. Newton's third law now tells us that if M1 pushes on M2, there must be an equal and opposite force acting on M1. So I'm going to use the same label C1 over here. Now, what are we going to go, go do on the right-hand side figure over here? Again, there's going to be a contact force between both of those blocks. In this case, I'm just going to give it a different subscript. We're going to call it contact force 2 for this configuration. This force right here that I just drew is M2 acting on M1. Newton's third law says, now, well, if M2 pushes on M1, M1 also pushes on M2 with an equal and opposite force right here. And that is all we have. These are the free body diagrams for both of these figures. The next thing we do now is apply Newton's second law to this. And let's go do that on the next page. All right, our next step now is to apply Newton's laws to both of these blocks in each configuration. And before I do that, I have to decide which direction is going to be positive and which one is negative. So this is what I am going to choose. I'm going to call this the positive x direction and I'm going to call this the positive y direction. Right, now we go ahead and we apply Newton's laws. So again, uh, in this vertical direction, these forces are going to balance out because there's no acceleration in this vertical direction y right here. Right? So that means that the normal n1 equals to the weight over here. We have the normal n2, which has to be equal to this force. Again, similarly for the right-hand side. So the y direction is not very interesting for us since there's no friction in this problem. Now, how about now looking at the x direction? So in the x direction, well, this is what we have. For the block M1 here, we're going to have plus F minus C1 equals to the mass times the acceleration. It's the mass M1 multiplied by the acceleration of that block, which I'm calling A. How about here on uh, block M2? On block M2, we notice we only have one force acting on it. It's force C1. 
and it's acting to the right, so it's positive C1, and that equals to M2. Now notice what I do here is I call it the exact same acceleration. Both of these blocks are going to move to the right with the same acceleration. Now that's it for Newton's laws for both of those blocks. Have a look now at uh, the right-hand side, what we have. For block M1, look what we have. Block M1 is the small one here. So what I have here is C2 is equal to M1 multiplied by the acceleration. And how about block uh, M2? Well, in this case, we're going to have F minus C2 equals to M2 multiplied by the acceleration. So the first question I have is, well, what is the acceleration of the blocks? I have two equations and two unknowns. The easiest way for you to obtain the acceleration of the blocks is I want to eliminate C1. One way to eliminate C1 is simply to add these equations. We notice in one equation I have minus C1. In the other equation I have positive C1. Similarly for C2, I have positive C2 in one of the equations and I have minus C2 in the other. So when you add up the equations, this is what you get. You get F equals to M1 plus M2 multiplied by the acceleration. So the acceleration for both of these blocks is going to be the, uh, this applied force, that push force, divided by the total mass of the system, M1 plus M2. Notice over here on this side, I am going to get the exact same acceleration. All right, if you work through the math, you're going to see that the C2 forces cancel out and you simply get the force divided by the total mass of the system. Same acceleration. Now let's go look at the magnitude now of forces C1 and C2. Those are the contact forces between both blocks. Um, in order to solve for a contact force C1, well, you can pick any of the equations there. Let me move everything over, give myself a bit more space. So let's go ahead and it's probably easiest to pick uh, equation two over here because it automatically tells you that this force C1 is equal to what? Well, it's M2 multiplied by the acceleration, which is here. Well, this is F divided by M1 plus M2. So this is important. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to box this uh, equation up. That is my contact force for this left-hand side. And let's go ahead and box out the acceleration, which is the same for both. All right, the last problem I have now is what about this contact force C2? Well, here we have the equation, right? This top equation tells us that C2 is equal to M1 multiplied by the acceleration. Well, that's F divided by M1 plus M2. So what are we going to get over here? If you think about both of these configurations here, which contact force is bigger? All right, to compare the contact forces, now we just look at those equations in the red boxes here. Uh, we see that, um, well, contact force uh, C1 is proportional to M2 right here. So we're going to assume here that M2 is bigger than M1, just from the size of the blocks, the way I drew them out. But if we have this assumption, then you automatically will see that this contact force C1 must be bigger than C2. Both blocks have the same acceleration, and then the force is proportional to the mass. Therefore, if M2 is bigger, um, you get that the contact force over on this left configuration here has to be bigger than the one on the right. Now, if you look to compare uh, what is the net force on each block, for that, all you have to do is just think about Newton's second law, right? The net force, well, there's two ways to think about. You can simply add up all the forces acting on each block, or you can call that the net force. But the other way to see it is using Newton's second law. The net force equals the mass of that block multiplied by the acceleration. But we have acceleration is the same for every single block. So if you're looking to say which block has the greatest net force, all you then have to do is say, well, whichever one has the biggest mass. That has to be the biggest net force. So for example, here's the net force acting on M2. This is a big number. The mass is big and the acceleration is the same. <laughs> uh, over here we get 
a similar net force acting on that block. It's the mass of that block multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, so those are the net forces. Actually, everything here are the net forces, right? Whenever you write down Newton's second law. All right, that's it for me, folks. This is a short video here to talk about this problem. We'll see you next time.